All right, you join us back at the auctions. Unfortunately, we weren't uh, lucky enough to grab one of the cars we looked at last time, so we're back, and hopefully we can pick something good up. So yes, we are back at the auctions. Unfortunately, we weren't able to pick up the Triton. Uh, that actually didn't meet its reserve. I think we bid up to around about 24 or so. Um, we didn't get the Hilux. Uh, that one, I think as well, didn't meet its reserve, which is unsurprisable with the damage that it had to the hood and the roof. Um, and the Hyundai uh, ended up going for a lot of money. So I think uh, there was a comment uh, before saying that it was just a simple bushing problem and it's a problem with those Hyundais. So it, it must have been it, but they it went for much more than we were willing to pay. So we are back at the auctions, uh, looking again for something to get us going, get us to that 40 grand. We have 36,600 uh, dollars, I believe, um, and we are starting it right off with this 2017 Subaru Forester. So straight away, this is actually a really nice car, and it's kind of funny because Morgan is always going on about how good Foresters are. Um, this is my first time kind of in a newer one with, you know, uh, you know, we got lane departure assist and, you know, really good aircon. Um, so all in all, it started up fine just sitting in the aircon here because um, yeah, this is Brisbane and it is hot, very hot. It is nine o'clock in the morning and we are near on 30 degrees. So um, what can I say? Uh, it started up okay. Um, it's idling perfectly now. The radio works. We've got uh, maps there. Um, yeah, all in all, just really nice, modern, new car. Um, I'm not seeing any problems with anything. There's a lot of bits and stuff. Um, we've got a sunroof. Let's see if that works. How do you do the sunroof? Um, I don't know. There'll be some way of doing it. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure how oh, that sunroof works. Uh, we've got heated seats, which is nice. Yeah, dual zone climate control. The seats are actually quite nice. They've got leather, nice leather. Uh, armrests, yeah, all in all, good place to be. I'm trying to make this interior as long as possible because I like the aircon. Um, but we'll head on out and we'll have a look at what the outside is like. All right, so the outside, we have got, it's nice, it's clean, it's a little, I mean, it's, it's a bit dirty. Um, tires look really new, nice and new. Rotors, a little bit of surface corrosion, but no lipping towards the front of the car. It's looking pretty good, pretty clean. It's running well. We've got a little bit, I don't know if you can see, but it looks like some kind of coating. You can see right, maybe right there it changes. So headlights might need a little bit of buff. I like these being black, especially on the white paint. It's, I don't know if you can see, but in the sun, it's actually got quite a lot of like metal flake and it actually makes the white pop a lot more. Coming to the back, yeah, normal back of the car. Interestingly, the top of the tow bar looks brand new. The bottom, not so much. All in all, it looks like a really good car. We will pop the bonnet just to make sure. All right, we have a hood strut. That's nice. Engine-wise, sounds very healthy. Haven't got any leaks. Not seeing any rat droppings on the top. 
filter is not leaking and that actually looks somewhat uh, new. Um, I don't know if you can see down there, but the coolant is just above the low point, so we're going to have to probably, if we end up picking it up, um, just top that up. Apart from that, it seems to be in very good order. Yeah, very nice. So yeah, that could be a very good, good buy. I'm pretty impressed. Like I said in the beginning, aircon is immaculate. Well, um, again, hopefully it doesn't go for too much. Um, this does have a reserve, but the reserve is nearly met and it's only sitting at like $14,000. So it leads me to believe that it's probably a, a dealership or a business that knows roughly uh, something like that, or this is what we need to at least get out of it. So fingers crossed we could pick it up and uh, make a little bit along the way. I've just realized it's got paddle shifters, which is pretty cool. But we'll go on to the next one. All right, we're, we've got a little bit of a theme with this video, white cars. Um, without any further ado, our next car is actually a bit not as cool, but in a similar vein, this 2014 Mazda CX-5. So Mazda CX-5, this one seems to be like the Forester in quite good condition. Um, for some reason we've got extra keys with the keys, but I guess that's maybe for the roof racks. Um, looking from the outside, there's a couple little, like little tiny nicks, if we can see that on camera, yep. Um, the headlights definitely need a good polish get those back up so they're no longer cloudy. Um, on the front here, it looks like we ran into something and um, that's lifted the plastic up. Maybe a job for some plastic welding. Um, on the hood or bonnet, if you're in the best country ever, looks fine. Everything looks pretty good. Again, the headlights, they definitely need a polish. Uh, wheel wise, yeah, these tires are getting you can even see it if you look down there, they're getting there, probably borderline at the moment. Rotors look okay, they're not lipped at all. Rear tires, yeah, they're pretty borderline as well. Interestingly, they're nice Michelins, which is interesting. Uh, we've got a tow bar pretty good interestingly the plastics on the car if you have a look at down the, the bottom of the bumper the black plastics are actually holding up quite well normally these fade really quickly so for a, a car to be you know I think it's 2014 this one it's actually not doing too bad um, in terms of staying black but we'll open her up she does have battery typical Mazda beep and open it up inside just like the forester we have got nice leather seats um we will if i can figure it out okay starts on the left turn that down it starts right up vehicle system inspection required um that's what the, it's saying. Near on full tank of fuel. Uh, warning, vehicle system inspection required. Okay, so it looks like it just has, it needs a, um, a service uh, maintenance wise. Okay, so it won't actually tell you when, uh, we've got 9,998 kilometers remaining. Uh, so, if it's just been serviced, that might be the case. Uh, if not, it's just someone's like, hey, we'll put it through the auctions and <laughs> yeah. Okay, so straight away, aircon works, radio works. Um, we have a sunroof in this one. Not as big as the Subaru, although unlike the Subaru, we have the sunroof controls where the sunroof should be. I don't know, maybe I'm an idiot and I don't know how to use the 
Subaru sunroof, but that all works. Uh, our electronics, that one works. Okay, so outside's looking good, a cut from a apart from a couple little nicks uh, we do have a dash mat on the inside we've actually got a piece of paper what is it uh oh okay um morgan please blur that out um there are a bunch of letters um oh great and a stat deck so these are all legal papers these probably should have been uh removed for selling vehicle, please guys, if you're gonna sell your vehicle, it's, even if it's not through the auctions, just get rid of the stuff in your car because you don't know who unscrupulous YouTuber is gonna come along, make a video and almost put their information on the internet. Um, so, yes, aircon works well. We've also, actually, I just realized, got heated seats. That's pretty cool. Uh, we've got a map, not as nice a screen, but this car is three years older than the Subaru, this is not bad. I actually don't mind this. I mean, the Forester, I think, is a much nicer place to be, but it's just newer. But yeah. Um, oh, and we've got a crystal thing. Am I meant to be touching? I don't know. Um, yeah, crystal thing. Revs, it is a diesel. Uh, the Forester, I believe, is a petrol. Um, not seeing any smoke out the back. Not a bad shout. Again, you're probably noticing with the theme of these cars, we're looking for safe bets at a good price that we can just sell. Because at the moment, there are a lot of things being put up for sale. A lot of cars that are problematic, people are sick and tired of projects, stuff like that, as everything's just tightening a little bit. Um, we've seen quite a few cars that I've almost gone to buy, um, and Morgan. Um, and then it just, yeah, just turned out to be just a little too dodgy. Um, I'm just noticing there's a red triangle right down here. And I'm thinking, oh, it's probably the handbrake. No, the handbrake one is the circle. Um, so I'll put the seatbelt on. See if that turns the triangle off. Nope. We've still got triangle. Okay, so maybe that is because of the warning. I believe so. If your eyes are able to see that. The vehicle system inspection. But yeah, so that would have to be something we'd have to look at. But apart from that, everything in the vehicle seems to be working as it should. The aircon again is really good. I like aircon. Um, but yeah, so Forrester, Mazda. Sorry, CX-5, they all CX something, as there's another Mazda right in front of us. What will the third option be? At the moment, Forest is winning me over, but this is pretty good as well. So we'll head on to the next one. So we are in the last car, and I think I've saved the best for last. We are sitting in and hopefully purchasing a 2016 Mercedes-Benz C250. So, right away, aircon, really good, really cold, by far the better of the aircons from the Forester and the Mazda, which, believe me, in up here in sunny Brisbane, uh, it matters. In the space of about 20 or 30 minutes, it's climbed up around about three or four degrees. The car itself, nice. Uh, we, the only warning light that came up was that it doesn't have fuel. It's on reserve fuel. We've got radio that works well. Um, we've got navigation. Um, we just gotta wait for it to load. Um, so all in all, seems solid. Uh, this car's only done 84,000 kilometers. From what I've been able to uh, make out, they're listed for around anywhere from 29 to 32 or so. Um, this being lower case, more along that 30 plus kind of line. Um, we've got service history. We've actually got quite a bit of service history, which is good. I did check the cluster. Uh, it is due for a service in 94 days. So if we were to pick it up, a good chance we'd have to service it with PB Auto, not a problem. Um, 
the car itself from the inside, we've got heated seats, all your electric luxuries, you've got memory settings, uh, really cool center console that opens up both sides. Um, this is probably by far my favorite thing is the piano black center console. Um, amazingly, it hides, smudges, and marks very well, which you'd think with piano black wouldn't be the case. Um, we don't have a sunroof, as you can see, unlike the others. Um, but yeah, apart from that, she's all good. Everything looks good, feels good. Engine, nice and responsive. Haven't got any smoke out the back. So I'll take you guys around the car to have a look. So I thought we'd start at the uh, back because I think these have one of the better backs of the C classes on Mercedes in general. The, it's just nice, elegant, simple. We have this normally when, uh, especially the Euro cars, they have the plate that the number plate actually uh, fixes to. Um, a lot of the time the, when they take the uh, plates off, they just take that with you. So you end up got to source that part as well. Um, looking on the outside of the condition, the car seems to be in very good nick. I'm not seeing any marks so far. It is dirty, it does need a wash. The wheels, plenty of tread, no curb rash. Front tires are practically brand new. Road is a little bit of surface corrosion, but that's fine. The bonnet. It's looking good. We've got a little rock chip on the front, but that's fine. Looking very good, very clean. I'm not seeing much. It just needs a very good wash, which would be a pleasure to wash this. Um, yeah, again, real meaty tires, a little bit of corrosion, and coming down this side, yeah, it's looking pretty good. We've got a little bit of curb rash in there. Apart from that, nice. The roof, looking good. And I'm not seeing any cracks or chips in the glass. So, exterior-wise, looks very good. We'll pop the hood uh, or bonnet. I don't know, I can't make mind up what to call it. We'll just make sure that everything's all good in there as well. Typical Euro, everything's hidden. Um, but what I can see is that a titsy tiny intercooler that's about the length of my hand. Um, I'm noticing a little bit of rat poo down there on the cross member. Pulleys look all good. Everything seems to be in order. This ECU seems rattly. Quite a bit of blow by. Yeah, not the best there. So, that's the Mercedes. Of the lot, I think honestly, the Forest has probably taken the cake in terms of ease of selling and the overall car. I think this probably second. Uh, the Mazda is really a numbers game just because there's so many of them out there. They are a depreciating car, they are getting cheaper. Uh, so, I don't know. I also want to think, I also want to stick with things that actually incite, excite me because then that will translate in camera to you guys. So you're not just watching effectively someone just looking at random Joe Blow cars. Um, but that in mind, we do have to try and make money. So at least with the Forester, it's something interesting. I do know there's quite a big following for Foresters out there, especially when it comes to the boosted ones and all that kind of stuff, as well as off-roading. Um, Euros, I love my Euros. Um, the Mazda on the other hand, yeah. It just it was like the safe bet kind of thing. So. Of the three, I'm probably staring towards the Forester, to be honest. Um, as much as I like the Mercedes, um, I think with everything tightening up, maybe that's probably not the wisest decision for people to be buying a luxury sedan. Uh, and it is only a C-Class, but yeah, it's a bit more than a, a Honda or something like that. So let us know down below, what should we be looking at? Two of the three cars we looked at today 
um, have either, oh, it's actually two of the cars we looked at today, don't have reserves, so they will be selling, which is really good. The Forester has a reserve, but it's pretty much, from what I can see, at the reserve now. Uh, so just a little bit more and you'd own that car as well. So, fingers crossed, we can finally get a car, because there's been a while since we bought a car, which was the D-Max, and that was back when this auction lot actually was full of cars. So, let us know down below. I think all three good picks, but we do, at the end of the day, have to buy one. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully, it's us picking up one of these ones that we've seen today. But, we'll see you guys later. Thanks heaps for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you